Hi, this is Tom Modi, University of Iowa. I'm going to show you an interesting case where we used a capsular tension segment in a patient that had a history of blunt trauma with a sublux lens and a fairly dense cataract. You can see that the lens had been prolapsed a bit inferiorly. Here we're going to use a sideways Arshinoff shell where we place some viscoat in the area of the loose zonules and then place provisc in the other area and squeeze over the viscoat into the area with the missing zonules. We're going to prepare for the use of an iris hook for the capsular tension segment. And here we're doing the capsular rexus. And you can see it goes pretty well, though. You can see how loose it is over in the area of the missing zonules. The rexus is a little bit decentered towards the area of the missing zonules, which we'll attend to later. But it is a continuous rexus. Now the hook is in place and ready. We're going to prepare for the capsular tension segment by using some cohesive visco dissection. In this case, we're using ProVisc. And we're getting ready to place the capsular tension segment in this area. We're trying to get a dissection plane between the capsule and the lens. And here's the Ahmed capsular tension segment. It's made by Morsher in Germany, but it's distributed in the United States by FCI. I'm going to make sure that it's right side up so that the eyelet is more anterior than the ring segment. Now we're going to use the iris hook and have the hook so that it's pointing up to capture the eyelet and pull the capsular tension segment over towards the area of the weak and missing zonules. And now we're going to slow everything down as Osher told us with a slow motion FACO with a low vacuum of about 200, a low bottle height of about 80, and a flow rate around 25. We're just going to slowly chop this cataract into little pieces and remove it very slowly with very little vacuum very little, so that we have very little fluid force pushing the zonules further. Here we're doing a chisel with a very slow motion amount of vacuum and bottle height to get the residual epinuclear material. The cortical material comes out nicely except for the area where the capsular tension segment is. And here I probably should have loosened the segment a bit, but you can see eventually we get the cortical material by moving it around the capsular tension segment. And so now we have an empty capsular bag, and we're going to loosen up the hook and remove it. And now we're going to place a 9 proline suture using a doubled arm CTC6 needle. And now we're just going to place it through this sclera in the area of the sulcus out under the iris and then out anywhere, it doesn't really matter. And now we're placing the other arm in a very similar fashion, right parallel with that first suture. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to do an internal sliding knot through the eyelet to tie this into position. So now we've made both passes and we're going to pull one of those passes out through the main incision, cut off the needle, and now we're going to use two duet micro forceps to pass this suture through the eyelet. And so we're passing the suture through there and grabbing it with the other and then uh, letting go and pulling it out through the eyelet as shown here. So now the suture goes through the eyelet and then out through the wound with the free end and now we pulled a loop out and just like Seepser showed us with iris repair we can set up the knot outside the eye and then by pulling on both of the free ends, we can pull the knot inside the eye. But we're not quite done yet because the knot needs to be slipped back and cinched down some. And so here we're going to use the duet microforceps to cinch the knot further down, which will bring the eyelet over towards the sulcus and tightens it up nicely. And so that initial pass was three, and now we're going to do two more of the same seepser sorts of uh, sliding knots. This time we're just going to go twice around uh, the uh, forcep and grab the free end again and then we pull the free end through those loops and pull the other free end and now you'll see the knot that goes uh, inside the eye. And we're going to go back in again with the duet micro forceps and we're going to use that to cinch down this tie by pulling uh, externally and then internally and, uh, and so now we're done. We, we're going to go ahead and use the micro scissors from the duet to um, cut uh, this off as close to the knot as we can so that we, we don't have free ends of the 9 proline which are sticking up uh, into the iris. So now we've got um, that all squared away. We're going to uh, try to make the rexes a little bigger. It was decentered 
which is common in these cases, uh, that after you center up uh, the uh, bag, you find out that the original rexus was decentered, and so we're going to use the duet forceps uh, to um, make a more centered rexus. We're going to place a, a single piece acrylic lens uh, in the bag, which is actually quite stable by this point. And uh, now the lens is uh, nice and centered and seems quite secure. And we're going to place some micol. Didn't notice any vitreous uh, at all coming around. We removed, of course, some of the viscoelastic material. And uh, so far, so good. Well, this is Tom Oding at the University of Iowa. Thank you very much for your attention.